Well, hello, hello there, folks and fellow tubers. My name is Nuclear Scaldy7, and in today's video, we will be doing part two of my 2012 original Mark of the Ninja walkthrough and Let's Play series. And the name of the level we're on today is called simply Breaching the Perimeter Using the Power of the Mark. You must fight back against Hessian forces before they strike again. Go ahead and grab that artifact. As you know, I like to grab all the artifacts that are available in each level. I don't know, I just like to get everything I can at least. These buildings are protected by high tech tripwires, but you can wreck them all with a simple bamboo dart. <laughs> and I almost killed myself with those security lasers by walking into them. But what I'm gonna do is hit this thing here with this bamboo dart and voila, it's destroyed. Same with this one too, so we can proceed safely without getting hurt or killed. The main transformer should be nearby. Destroy that and you'll bring down all the lights for a time. Hold on, do you hear something? Watch. The alarm switch off when the guard walks past them. Or when he's dragged past them. Okay, so those alarm lasers will switch off either when he walks past those things or when he's dragged past them, as Aura said. I'm gonna wait a moment and be patient because I don't want to risk him noticing me. Detecting me, in other words. So I'm gonna. Maybe I'm just hearing things. Get down there in a less noisy fashion, and voila! I got him. I'll show you an example of what Aura is talking about. And voila, that's exactly what Aura is talking about. And I'm gonna go ahead and hide his dead body there. Oh, and that's also where we need to go to. So. hit that dialogue bubble. At the beginning of the production, it felt like every new gameplay feature we added took away part of my tool set for making things look pretty. Everything had to be binary light or dark, so I couldn't add dramatic lighting. The tiling system meant that I had to paint everything on a grid, so I couldn't use too many fun shapes. The fog of war blurred and desaturated a large portion of the screen, meaning I had to rethink how to distribute color. Games, especially 2D games, always come with art restrictions, but Mark of the Ninja had a lot more than I have ever expected, experienced, I should say. It was incredibly frustrating at the beginning because it felt like every time I figured something out, we would add a new feature and I would have to do it again. However, the problem solving was actually pretty rewarding and it forced me to deal with functionality in a way I hadn't before. It's a pretty great example of how working with a really tight set of restrictions can help you grow. My life is hard. No, it's not. Megan Shaw, lead environment artist. Now I'm going to crawl in this vent here and switch this off. Damn it, I lost him. The security guards in this game, or soldiers, are so memorable. I can't think of a game with more memorable soldier enemies than this one. Speaking of which, I just killed him, and so what I'm gonna do now is hide him in here. Not that it matters, but hey, it gives me extra honor points so I can purchase things in the future. The transformer should be close, but be careful. The catwalks are crawling with guards. <laughs> Originally, we wanted the ninja to have a grappling hook he could swing back and forth on, but it ended up feeling too complex and resulted in a lot of ninja planting his face into walls. We simplified it into the grapple to point mechanic, then added the dangling back in as a simple up-down motion. Once our artist added some gruesome stealth kills to the dangling, we knew that that was what we were looking for. Tatham Johnson Programmer. 
And I'm gonna destroy the lights, as that's one of our seals, but first I'm gonna kill this guy, so that he won't be able to notice it. That way he won't be able to alert other nearby guards. I'm gonna go ahead and hide his body in here this time. Ah, there's Aura, our female ninja friend. Voila, destroyed them. The outdoor section before the generator is one of the sandboxes I use for testing, a large open section with lots of guards close together, with multiple grapple points and hiding spots. It was a good spot for examining how the AI, the AI responded to different situations, and how the ninja tools could be implemented. Very fun place to play. Wade Lindley, quality assurance. seal failed. Just had to get him out of the way quickly, because otherwise he would notice me, no doubt. Reach the transformer in under a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and press E and destroy this thing. And voila! So I can now go through here safely without getting evaporated to invisible bits. Not only that, an artifact recovered. Noisemaker, a small firecracker will get the attention of anyone nearby. In fact, we're gonna go ahead and use it here pretty soon. Remember, if a guard is blocking your way, you can try to distract him. And I'm going to do that by throwing that toss maker to make him look the other way. Voila. And that's just what I did. And he is history. Yeah. I would have destroyed the lights in that other area, but it would have caught the attention of the guards too much. Jump space and hold LCTRL. So that's how you do it. And voila. I'm gonna hit that dialogue bubble before I destroy the other one. I don't remember the exact day, but at one point, feeling fairly frustrated, we decided to take the visual representation of sound and sight very literally. I generated a number of rain effects to do just that. At the time I put them together, they were very much placeholder, and I thought for sure we would revisit them stylistically, but in the end, they shipped and seemed to do the job just fine. Aaron Boutillier, lead animator. I think that's how you pronounce his name anyway, hopefully I'm doing just that, in case I need to use that for anything. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and destroy these lights. Notice how quickly I went to that other doorway to hide behind so he wouldn't notice me, especially as he, while he was looking the other way. And I'm going to go ahead and do that again, but this time I'm going to kill him. Okay, and as usual, I'm going to hide his dead corpse in here. Body hidden. Okay. The challenge rooms went through a couple different presentations. Initially, they were just a secret room as part of the world, but that felt a bit artificial and gamey, even for an abstract 2D game with points and a high score. As we developed more of the game's themes and what the implication of the ninja's tattoos were, it felt right to present them as a mental challenge slash hallucination within the ninja's mind. 
Nels Anderson, lead desire. Designer, I mean, duh. We're gonna play one of them. Now, this looks rather difficult, but it's a little easier than meets the naked eye, as you can tell. When it came to challenge rooms, I wanted different music to really help set them apart from the main levels. Also, I wanted to try something new, so I decided to make a procedurally generated track. I knew I wanted an ambient style track just to fill the space and set the mood. Something that doesn't call lots of attention to itself. I started by collecting sounds that gave the feeling I was looking for, and laid them out in my DAW to get the right levels for everything. Once everything sounded good, I bounced them all out into separate pieces. These pieces were then put into FMOD, where I layered them back together at the levels I had arrived at in my DAW. The difference being, now I triggered all the layers, each layer containing similar sounds randomly. This creates an ever-evolving soundscape that is never quite the same. It works so well that we use this for the main menu music as well. Matthew Bartitsen, Audio Department. Hopefully I'm pronouncing his name correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. That large, big, fat, heavy crate. Voila. Okay, as simple as that. Maybe a tiny bit harder than I initially thought it was, but hey, but not by much. Okay, and this is also where we get another scroll. <clears throat> Let me tell you the stories of the birth of the mighty Hisumu clan from the time of our first and greatest master, Tetsuji. I tremble before Tetsuji, greatest ninja of clan Hisumu. And also, if you look closely, there's oriental designs of Myriad Sword. Like here, if you look closely at least, you'll see that there's a sort of oriental dragon. Which I think is awesome. Now that's where we're supposed to go. Hisobu clan. Or so I thought. Guess not. Okay, so I've got a... Okay, whoa, that was close. I almost put myself in a somewhat dangerous he's kind of his body's kind of getting in the way so I'm gonna just hide under these vents until, until that, that thing's, thing's done coming up, up. the same with we'll here again bed. luckily we can, we can press, press letter E to turn it off well that's, that's just what I did okay, I'm gonna get out of the way of that security laser I'm gonna hit the dialogue during one particular playtest of this encounter, I realized we might actually have a shot at accomplishing the goals we wanted to with Ninja. The playtester Alex had never played Ninja before, but he resolved this encounter in a way I'd never anticipated, but was totally consistent with the systems we developed. Specifically, he took out one of the guards and used his body to disable the lasers and escaped without ever killing the power. Totally valid, but I never thought of that as an option. My mouth literally hung a gap, and I realized we might just have reached the density of systems where players would be able to resolve situations in valid ways. The designers hadn't specifically planned, given a major goal was providing that level of player-directed choice. It was a very edifying moment. Nels Anderson, lead designer. <clears throat> and voila, took, took them, them out. out. 
Just wanted to make sure that there'd be no risk of them noticing me. And this is where we take out another tripwire. Power disabled. And along the way, we get another little beautiful artifact. I can't get him on the radio. Can't get him on the radio. The blackout is working. While the guards fuss over that, we could slip right by them. I'm just gonna take out this dude and. Oh man, that would be a painful way to die. Oh my lord. Oh, well, of course, let's not forget to destroy some lights, because that's a part of the seals in this map. Early in development, this area introduced a new opponent type, which we called civilians. They wouldn't be dangerous or aggressive in any way. If they saw the ninja, they'd shout and make noise, potentially drawing genuinely dangerous guards. In this area specifically, they were repairmen fixing the power outage the player caused. The design notion seemed sound. A non-aggressive enemy that draws other, more dangerous enemies. We even added a score penalty should the player kill them. They were implemented and mostly functional, but just never ended up being very interesting. They were basically boring guards that didn't really change the way the player behaved. We removed them, although we were able to reskin them and reuse some of their animations as the player's ally ninjas in the first and final levels. Nels Anderson, lead designer. So I'm going to hide behind this guy and quietly sneak behind him. Go ahead and destroy that light. I'm going to hide under here in case... There's any guards that noticed that. Didn't think so, but I just wanted to double check. So I'm gonna destroy this light in a bit, but first I'm gonna jump behind this guard. Who's up there? Is someone up there? Guard down. Approaching. Hey, come out here. Hey, eyes on target. There is anyway. I think I'm gonna do something here first and then do just that. Besides, there's more lights to destroy here. That way, not only will we destroy some lights, we'll get that guard's attention. I'll hit that dialogue commentary bubble when I kill this guy first. Come on, boy. Must be jumpy tonight. Must be jumpy tonight. Nope, you're really hearing things, my friend. Not only that, we got an artifact. Because our world is 2D, some lighting concepts are hard to translate. Lights shouldn't go through walls, but what about through stairs or catwalks? Should a flashlight always cast light through stairs, or only when a guard is looking behind them, we don't want a swinging flashlight to suddenly reveal the player unexpectedly from the other side of the room, as that will feel unfair. At the same time, guards should be able to intentionally shine their flashlights behind stairs or through catwalks, otherwise they appear unrealistic or just inept. We went back and forth on these issues a lot and tried a variety of combinations before settling on the final behavior in the game where guards need to actively look behind those platforms for their lights to shine through. Brick Miles Programmer. Got an idea for how I could do that other part. Although that'd be a bit dangerous because you can't destroy those lights.
spiral of glass and steel, 15th floor. But we can sail right over them. Meet me on the roof. New optional seal. Reach the top of the tower without being detected. This area is a great part of this level. Sneaking or dicing your way through each floor with the threat of getting caught escalating as it gets closer to the lights coming on. When this first went in, it was fun, but didn't have the feeling of tension we wanted with the time limit of the lights coming on. At that time, we had the regular game music playing, and it was just pulling it flat. So over a weekend, I took the music pieces we had composed and reworked them with some additions into a building track that lasted the length of time the player was, has gone, has before the lights turn on, and built it in a way that it transition to the regular combat music that kicks off when the player is detected. This really drove home the feeling that something bad was going to happen if you didn't keep moving. Matthew Martinson, Audio Department. Power for the 15th floor back on. Voila. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to hide his body here. destroy at least two of these lights. 10 out of 20 destroyed. Or more like 12 out of 20 destroyed. And now there's only one guy in here, so amazingly that didn't get his attention. Now 13 out of 20 lights destroyed. Just using that to grab his attention. Notice how I had to do that very quickly without him noticing. I'm just gonna quietly sneak up behind him and voila! He's dead as a doornail. Take him out. Just five more lights, and we will have completed this optional seal. Voila. Gonna toss him down there. Body hidden. As would be the case. What happened to the light? Everything seems fine. Okay, now I'm gonna sneak it behind him and voila, going for the kill. And then I'm gonna grab his body and toss it out there. Again. All right. I'm gonna put his dead body in there. Hey. Oh! Learn not to do that again. Turning the power for sixteen back on. Now I'm just gonna. Go. Body hidden. Okay, I'm not doing that again. Because, yep, he noticed me, unfortunately. I'm just going to hide his body in the vent there versus running the risk of him noticing that. This light went out. 
My Canadian accent went out. No sign of target over here. Like his gritting teeth, that's kind of funny. Gonna dump his body in there. I'm gonna use a noisemaker to get his attention. Another bamboo dart. Voila! Finally, I took him out. Body hidden. Voila. Hopefully I cleared that area of guards there. Okay, just two more of these lights and we will have completed the seal of destroying 20 lights altogether. And voila. An artifact recovered as well. Seal completed. You're almost there. So is the repair crew. Keep moving. Eh, go a slightly different way. Okay. Uh, 18th floor. Power's almost back on. Did I hear something? Did I hear, I hear something? something? Quietly and and that was very smooth what I just did there. I don't mean that in an arrogant way. It's just miraculous I somehow managed to do that. <clears throat> I have to destroy, destroy some, some of these, of these lights, lights here, here. just to uh, distract him. And voila, he's, he's dead. dead. Now I'm not going to hide his body anywhere, but I'm going to use it to get me through this more dangerous area that does have these body hidden. You're almost at the roof. Now something, something you could, could do, do unlike, unlike me, me is maybe toss his body in that guard's, guard's direction, direction and that, that will terrorize, terrorize him into a stupor. Did I, Did I hear something? something? Where did the light went out? As I said earlier in this video, perhaps, but in case I haven't, this game's Big, Big dumb, dumb clunky, clunky soldier guard, guard enemies are so memorable. Their dialogue, their big dumb clunky look, just the whole shebang. And I'm gonna go ahead and use his dead body to terrorize and scare this guard. Unfortunately, that didn't do it. Oh, it failed the seal. Turning the power back on for 19. Yes. 
history. Hopefully it won't work this time, unlike the last time. Easy seal to complete. Just like Big Mac Davis likes to find all the secrets and achievements for Doom 3, I like to complete all the optional seals for Mark of the Ninja in a rather similar way. Perhaps even obsessive way. Okay. Gonna look the other way. Just so, so there's, there's no, no chance, chance that they'll, they'll detect, detect me on accident. I'm gonna go ahead and hide his body over here. Forming a bit of a miniature mass grave, if you will. And voila, he's dead too. See if this will lead to anywhere interesting. I kind of doubt it. Nope, that takes us to where we were before, I think. Although... Right, gonna turn, turn off this tripwire. Trip Not, Not only that, that an artifact. No, no, more like a scroll. scroll. Reflects as fear in the eyes of Tetsuji's prey. Tetsuji's prey. Ah, when she shows up, it means it's somewhere new. Ah, finally, all three optional seals completed. Well, well, folks, I believe that will end part two of my original 2012 Mark of the Ninja walkthrough. If you like this video, please hit that like button below. And if you want to see more of my videos, please bamboo dart that subscribe button below. And I will see you all later, folks. Till that next video, though, my name is Nuclear Scaldy7. Stay safe as well as happy and healthy in this period of pandemic and protest. Amen.